Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to Cause Streams TV. As always, I am Cause and I'm going to be your host today. And this may be a bit of a rant video because I am just kind of fed up with how this system is working. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, we are officially done week 10 of The War Within. That means we are two and a half months in, into the season. We are going into week 11. There's been lots of news and announcements already about season two, about the dungeon pool, about what's going on, about the new zone. So there is a lot happening. But I feel that there's something really important missing from that. And this is going to be the topic of the video. Like I said, this may be a bit of a rant. So let's just jump right into that. And later, we're going to take a look at the monk and how he's doing this week. He is the only character I focused on once again, trying to get my crests up and trying to get some more gear and eye level upgrades we're going to talk about that as well and we'll open his vault a little later but first i want to touch on this because it drives me absolutely bonkers for those of you who don't know i actually run with a group of friends every saturday night we try to push keys and we try to see how far up into the io world we can get well one of the most frustrating things we experienced this weekend is every time we timed an 11 we would two chest the 11 we would go into the 12 because i would drop it down from a 13 we would try the 12 and then within you know the first boss it would basically fall apart and someone would leave that happened multiple times this weekend we went in and we two chested an 11 era Kara, which gave us a 13 city of threads 12 city of threads was failed so we went back in and did the 11 city of threads we timed that city of threads we actually two chested it got a 13 era kara went in to do the 12 era kara and then that fell apart and became an 11 era kara and because it's only three of us currently and you never know what you get in the pug world that 11 era kara is now a 10 era kara because once we got to the last boss people just couldn't stay alive so one of the most frustrating things of this entire season outside of the fact that we're going to talk about crests here in a second is that the current mythic plus depletion system is absolute garbage i will say that here and now i will die on this hill i think the way that the system is created right now is absolutely terrible for pugging and it's really destroying my eagerness to actually go on and even attempt to do high keys because i feel like it's an absolute waste of time as a tank i can pretty much get invited to most keys however they all end within 10 minutes of a run because something goes wrong and it's very frustrating because like i don't mind if we fail the key i'd like to finish it so i can see how hard do some of the ads hit later in the dungeon city of threads is one of those dungeons where we actually did the week before get up to the third boss in city of threads so i kind of have an idea of what the ads feel like later on how to manage my defensives but we couldn't do that again you can't practice a key when you go do a 12 it fails you do the 11 you two chest the 11 you try the 12 it becomes an 11 you two chest the 11 you do the 12 it becomes it is so frustrating this system absolutely sucks now i may be complaining but i do have a solution that i really hope blizzard would consider implementing moving into season two and then i feel like the pug scene currently has really died off i can remember back in dragonflight hugging key levels in the 24 to 25 range and being successful with those keys like yes a lot would still fall apart and a lot of mistakes would happen but you could push those keys even back then you go do a 23 as a practice key whereas now when you do an 11 it's no longer a practice key it's a joke anyway what is the solution that i would propose for this system and what could blizzard do better to actually make it a little more enticing for us to play at that higher level and do those higher keys first of all what we can start with is actually implementing a second keystone we know for a fact that they can implement any item into the game that we want i mean at one point they had three hearthstones that we could use all sitting in our bags so why not include a second keystone now how would that work first of all you have the 2 to 11 keystone those are the ones that have the affixes and all that stuff if you can get to the 12 you now get a 12 keystone you don't have to time it to get it after completing an 11 it unlocks the 12 keystone you get that keystone and that 12 can never deplete below a 12 meaning that if someone has all of their 11s done they don't have to push their key up to a 12 have it fall apart and then go back to the 11 if someone wants to farm their keys they can can actually run their 11 keystone instead of their 12 keystone that is my proposed solution because i really think the current system of depleting below a 12 at, after you have all these 11s done is extremely infuriating and an extreme waste of time for example on my monk last week i did 25 keys in total 18 of these keys were upgrades one of them was just a completion and six of them were disbands all of the 12s were disbands and then we had to go back and run the 11 it's so 
frustrating. I really hope there's some announcements going into season two where Blizzard says, hey, we're going to add this new feature so then we can actually start practicing those 12 keys. The other solution Blizzard could implement if they don't want to use a second keystone is get rid of depletion. If I've already timed a key at a 10, I should never be able to deplete below that keystone level. Same with an 11, same with a 12. Well, what that would mean is if I time a 10 and then I go back and do another 10, but that key fails, I still have a 10. If I finish the key, then I get a different 10. If I fail the key, I keep the same 10. And that would apply to 11s, 12s, and onward. That would mean that you get that second chance to go into that key and try it again. Even give us three attempts on the keystone. Like it's like a three charge system where if you fail, the key remains at a 10, but now you have two more attempts to do it. Just anything to eliminate the current depletion system because it is far too punishing and far too much of a waste of time having to repeat the same key over and over knowing you can already do all the 11s. My second rant is going to be about the crest system. Now I know Blizzard is so happy with their current crest system and I have to give them credit. This expansion more than ever, they really made a lot of good catch up mechanics for alts when it comes to gearing. It is fairly easy to get gear, right? Once you start getting into sevens, you get the heroic gear, etc. The profession crafting catch up system is fantastic. Blizzard has done a great job enabling alts to catch up in most areas of the game. The one area that they have dropped the ball in is the crest system. I say this as someone who had to main swap 10 weeks into the expansion, meaning I went from my DK that I started at week one of the expansion who has been getting mythic vaults, crests, and has been capped all season to a monk who now has to catch up on getting all of these crests. The current cap on crests is 990 crests total at 12 crests a key. That means it will take me 82 and a half keys. So let's round that up to 83 keys, successful eights or higher to cap out on my crest. That is an astronomical amount of time. And for the last two weeks, I've been pushing really hard on my monk. Last week we did 34 keys, 26 of which got us 12 crests and three of which only got us five because they weren't timed, but they were completed. And then this week we have 18 more keys. So that gives us a total of 44 completed keys that were upgrades, giving us 528. I still need over 400 crests, even cap out on my monk. We're gonna take a look at his current gear state in a while. It really wish blizzard would give alt the ability like if if your alt is now doing tens and you've got 10 times on a main increase it to like even give us 15 or 20 do something or lower the requirement to upgrade why does an upgrade cost 15 crest but you get 12 from co completing a 30 minute key that is absolutely absurd so i need to spend at least one hour to get one upgrade that is absolutely bonkers in my mind that we still have this system in the war within it was a good idea Idea in Dragonflight and in Dragonflight I could take a character in season two or three and get them up to my mains IO and my mains item level fairly quickly I have been going hard for two weeks and I'm not even close to my main so what is my solution for the crest system honestly I don't even know it would be nice that if completing a key that gives you crest to upgrade a piece of gear it gives you the same amount per key per upgrade so if it's 15 upgrade you get 15 at the end of the key and then for alts I wish there was a catch-up mechanic that if you complete it you get like a chest at the end that gives you an extra 15 to 30 crests so that way you can upgrade. even if they give you the lower crest so you could upgrade to the other crest that'd be fine but eventually you'll cap out i don't know what the true solution is but blizzard please please do something because it is so painful right now to try to get an alt up into a mythic ready state specifically my monk because he because we are capped behind that 626 gear i can't do and even if i upgraded all my gear right now i'm capped i will be 626 and that's it i can't go anywhere from there and i need to get him ready for mythic silken so now i'm stuck waiting for multiple weeks of vault and i have to pray that my vault is good that's the other problem vaults have been a mess for me lately i have had no luck last week my monk took bracers and i had to craft my boots those are the two biggest frustrations i've had having to swap my main at week 10 it's been so frustrating i really hope blizzard considers the things that the community is saying about these about this because a lot of people are a bit frustrated with how all of this works and most people especially in regards to the keystone system depletion either should be removed or give us a second keystone that stays at 12 or higher depending on the keys we time that way we can actually practice those higher keys because right now there's really if you're gonna do an 11 just do the 10 and two chest it there's no point in struggling through the 11 but i really hope there's some changes coming that they haven't announced yet and we've already touched on the apex so i'm not going there again let's now jump into the game and actually take a look at what the monk looks like in week 10 we have played the monk for two solid weeks and he's been our primary focus i've done other things outside of the outside as well like i continue working 
working on my gold making. I continue doing my, my crafting and all that stuff. So we'll talk about that as well. But I haven't done dungeons or raids with any other character. It's completely been focused on the monk. So jumping directly into the monk, this is where we are at the beginning of week 11. 624.5. We actually started week 10 at 618.25. So that is a total of six eye levels, give or take a quarter of an eye level. So not bad at all. I am sitting on a bit of crest on the monk right now because I'm holding off to see what we get in our vault. I have 159 crests in total. 90 of those I want to save because I do want to get the Kaiveza weapons and then I want to craft another weapon to go with it. So I will always save that 90 for the day that I RNG get lucky and get the weapon. Maybe we'll get a mythic kill to add that into our mythic vault. And then overall, realistically, we've just been chasing tertiaries and we've gotten pretty lucky doing some of the keys we've done. Any pieces that I upgraded early are still upgraded. Everything else is kind of just sitting where it is. For example, we still have 610 gloves, no real upgrades. We did get these mythic legs from raids. So I did upgrade them all the way since they will be around with us for a while. But all the other stuff you've seen here, unless I can upgrade it without using gilded crests, it doesn't get upgraded. But some of the upgrades I do want to kind of point out that we got this week, we ended up running a lot of our carrots. We got another sack root, a friend of ours traded it to us. It came with leech. So really cool to have leech on our sack root. And then we got another weapon from Aracara, the two-hander. And this one actually came with speed. So two additional tertiaries is not a bad thing on the gear. So I am happy with that at the monk. So we did get some luck with the RNG, but that's where the monk is going into week 11. And then let's quickly jump in and discuss how we did with our IO. Now, last week, going into week 10, we we're at 25, 26, and we finish week 10 at 26.50 for a total of 104 IO points that we got over the week. We did get some of those 11s I did talk about, and then we also did get some 10s as well. Some of the key things we got is that 11 City of Threads that we actually two chest 48 points. We got an 11 Aracara two chested for 12 points, a 10 Siege of Morales for 30 points. Then this is what I mean, like, that would be really nice if I had a keystone that sat at 12 and i could try to run that key over and over and practice it until i was so yeah it will probably still disband a lot but i think if i can get the reps in to understand the patterns to understand how hard ads may be hitting it may help a little bit in the long run so i'm really hoping blizzard considers that in the future all right and so let's jump in to the game and let's take a look at what the monk gets in his vault we're opening the vault in windwalker spec in the hopes that we get the weapon from kaiveza or the trinket and the verdict we did get the void etched claw one-hander and it's mythic track so that's actually not a bad find that could save us from having to craft the weapon uh but it's haste first we do have the uh haste mastery wrist but we already have mythic track there and then we do have a hero track neck piece from silken court this is actually a really good neck piece to have moving on we have a mythic track chest really big there we can upgrade that and we have another mythic track chest we can catalyze that is what i meant for these two and then we have the dead eye spyglass unfortunately this trinket falls into kind of like our b tier mid tier range so not really the greatest right now one of our, our two best options is this hero track neck with the insane amount of verse but we could potentially get this during our heroic reclear or i can canalize a chest piece to have a mythic track chest piece which would be massive main stat upgrades because the neck only comes with stamina not main stat so what i think i'm going to do because the stats on the weapon really aren't that great there's better weapons that i can get plus i want to craft mine like i want kaibeza's weapon and then i'm going to craft another weapon we're going to skip that this week the wrists we already have a mythic tracks so we're not going to worry about those we i think we are going to take one of the chests because i can probably get into heroic reclear uh get another attempt at kaibeza and another attempt at this neck i think the bigger upgrade overall is taking one of these chest pieces and catalyzing it for me i have both appearances so it doesn't matter which one i take it's too bad neither come with a tertiary it's too bad both are exactly 623 we're gonna grab one of these chests and we're gonna go catalyze it and i should be able to upgrade it straight up to max mythic we have an 11 non breaker to start the week which is actually really good we have an 11 down breaker time but that's what we're gonna start with let's go upgrade our piece here and after upgrading that piece and catalyzing it we are now at 625.31 still a little low on the monk so i'm going to try to do a couple more gear upgrades before raid but i don't really have many crests anyway so we'll see how this looks i may use the crest just to do some upgrades so we also upgraded our wrists up to 632 the problem i have now is i don't have flight stones if i wasn't capped I would have had a lot more flight zones, so that's going to be the next farm I have to start doing. So we're walking into the week at 625.88. 
All right, and although we didn't really put any time into the DK last week, she still has a vault she needs to open, so we'll open it in Frostbeck. Let's see what she gets. It is just the two raid slots. Oh my goodness. Wait a second. Oh, I did a Lafar. Oh, I got so excited there that I got a, oh, Mythic Track, but I only did one Mythic Track raid, and I actually already have this at 639. That is too funny. So we do have a Mad Queens, but it's LFR, so it's kind of useless. And so is this. So we'll take the sockets on the DK this week. Nothing special. All right, and let's jump in and talk about the one new mount we got this week, and it is from the promotion. Obviously, I live in Canadian land, so this promotion did not apply to me. However, people were giving it away. My friends were able to get it and get me a code. And so we got the Hate Forged Blaze Cycle. I absolutely love this mount. I can't wait till they add wings to it so it can fly, but just the little Diablo head on the front of it. Nice blazing engine compartment there. The wheels are on fire. Nice big exhaust on it. Yeah, this this is absolutely a beautiful mount. I think they did a really good job on it. I love how it looks. Yeah, I'll probably use this for most of my ground mounts. And you know, obviously you gotta have the transmog to go with it. So yeah, the Hate Forge play cycle is the only mount we got this week and it came from the Mountain Dew promotion. So thumbs up for this one, Blizzard. And then the last thing I want to touch on is our gold farming adventures. As I mentioned last week, that has slowed down quite a bit. We still do have about 3 million-ish worth of items in the auction house that it, they are selling. Slowly they are selling, but they haven't really uh, sold at a fast pace. So every day we get a few thousand here, a few thousand there. We actually sold a blue sword from RFD for 20k, which was mind-blowing to me. But overall, we were at 890k last week. We are now 990 k going into week 11 so not a bad amount we got about 100k now we did make more than that but i've been taking money off for example i gave about 10k to my monk so that way i can ensure that he can continue buying his consumables and then i gave another 15k to my dk to do a couple enchants and sell those and get some money as well so overall we've made over a million but i have been sending money around now to kind of make sure i, I restock some of the characters that i've taken money from but we are at 990 going into week 12 i will continue to gold farm there are some things that are very lucrative that guaranteed sell and then other things that are they're kind of they're those rare transmogs that they will sell eventually you just got to keep reposting it so that is something i will keep doing it has been a lot of fun kind of finding those items there's a bit of like an adrenaline rush when you find that unique item and it dings and it has it's you know worth a couple hundred thousand right so it's exciting when you see that stuff go up and that is really it for our week 10 recap it was a good week outside of the frustrations i've had with not being able to really do 12s and practice them overall i have done a lot of keys and i have caught up quite a bit on my monk so looking forward to see what week 11 has to bring now what is our plan for week 11 well i'm definitely hoping that my monk can be brought into the full mythic reclear which means i get to do brood twister and kaibeza kaibeza opens up the loot pool for the weapon and the the trinket which i really really need on my monk that will definitely increase my damage potential quite significantly so hopefully i get taken to that and then we will continue to push keys we i still need about 400 crests to catch up on the monk and then at that point if i can get at least another 200 plus crests this week then i should be able to get his gear fully upgraded to where he needs to be and then still have those 90 crests left over to be able to make a weapon if i get it in my following vault as always i will continue to gold farm as well and then i will kind of poke way at a few other things. I will try to do some more of the transmog runs that I do, hoping to get some of those really rare items, and then probably just see where that leads us with our auction. So I will make another update next week. But yeah, outside of that, let me know how you guys are doing. How has your week been? What are some of the things you're still doing in the War Within to keep you busy and playing the game? Or have you moved on to other games and new, new adventures somewhere else? I, as always, will continue doing what I'm doing. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Thanks for tuning in to the video. I will catch you guys in Kazalgar or the Mythic Plus Arena. Until next time, everybody, peace out.